The layer manager in AutoCAD is a palette, and it's the main format for creating and maintaining your drawing's layers. Here you can change the state of a layer, create new layers, delete layers, and change the properties of a layer. To get to it, the easiest way is to type LA on your command line and press enter. This will open up the layers property manager palette. Once open, it works just like any other palette and you can dock it or move it around however you want to do. Any changes you make in the layer manager are completed in real time. That means as soon as you change the layer property or state, your drawing is instantly updated. And this allows you to keep the layer manager open at all times. Let's move it over and shrink it down. Now you can see the drawing that I have here, and I have three main drawing layers in it, though there are six layers altogether in my file. As I make changes to the layers, in the layer manager, my drawing will instantly be updated. So for the wall, if I change the color just by clicking here and clicking a new color, okay, all my walls are now red. That's why you want to draw everything to a by layer state because then the layer will control everything and it makes it so easy. I don't have to select any of those objects, but I can change it to a red line that's hidden in just a few steps. There you go. Now you can see here that there are a lot of things that you can work with in the layer manager. These are the names of all the layers. When I pick the box that says name, it will aggregate that list either you know, from A to Z or Z to A. Now this column here is the status. It tells me which one is current. I can double click anywhere on one of these in the status or names column to activate that layer or to make it current. The one with a check by it makes it current. If I pick it one time, I'm selecting it. I can hold down the control key and pick different ones. If I click it again, it will unselect it. So now when I do something here, it will do that to all of these layers. So I can make all of these layers have a continuous line type. My drawing is updated. I can turn them all green. And now all of those objects are green. Of course, I can undo that with my undo command. So you have status, you have name, you have if it's on or off. So I can click here, I can turn off a layer. I still have these selected, so I turned all of them off. But if I pick in one spot now, it'll just affect only that one. I can freeze the layer, I can lock it, and you can see it sort of fades it back. And when you move over that object, it kind of puts that little padlock looking icon. I can't even select the object so much. I mean, I can, but I can't delete it. It won't let me. I can't change it. I can't do anything to it. So when you get line work that you needed to have set, you know, locked in, then lock it down. And you can sort any of these columns by their specific type or function just by clicking on it in ascending or descending order. I can sort by color. I can sort by line type, line weight, etc. So the color is pretty straightforward as well. I just pick in the box here or anywhere on there and it brings up my select color window. There are a lot of colors here. There are 255 specific or standard colors that I can pick from. Most of them that you're going to use are right here. Colors one through nine. Seven is the color white. And that goes back and forth between white and black. That depends on your background color on your screen. Right now my screen color is black, so it makes it white. Now if my background was white, it would be black. So that's just a relative color. But when you print to this color, it will always be black. That's the color ink that would be used. Now in this case you have color 250, which is a faded color. It's just a little bit less than 100% of black. And down even more, all the way down to 
and almost not even there. So if you want to draw something that's kind of not there, you would use 255. So these are the most common colors that you're going to use right here. Now, you can pick any one of these other colors to make it current, and they have a specific number. It's like this is number 79. This form of yellow or shade of yellow is number 50. So I can type in any of the numbers in this box. If I want it to be the standard red, I can just type in the number 1. Click OK, and it's still red. Line types are a little bit different. I just click on it. Whatever's loaded into my file, I can use. Just select it, click OK, and it changes that line type to that line type. Double click on it to open this up. If I don't have the line that I want here, I can click Load, and here are all the standard AutoCAD line types. You have a bit of a preview and description for that line type, and then the name right here. This is the source file. You can customize line types. We're not going to get into that now, and I recommend that you stick with the standard line types as much as possible. Otherwise, anytime you send a file to somebody, you also have to send them that customized line type file. Otherwise, their lines won't work. So you can have dots, you can have dashes, you can have phantom lines. Some of them even have a little bit of text into them. This will say gas, this will say HW for hot water, etc. The majority of the lines you're going to use are going to be continuous hidden, dashed, phantom, etc. Now the line weight controls the thickness of the line in millimeters when you go and print your drawing. You can set it to default, which is just a thin standard, or you can set it down to the thinnest line, which measures at 0 millimeters, or the thickest setting, which is 2.11 millimeters. So these get pretty thick. The majority of the time, you're going to be around 0.15 millimeters up to about 1 millimeter. Really thick lines will be 2 millimeters. Now there's a setting called transparency in AutoCAD. It works just like color, line type, line weight, but it makes an object transparent or translucent. That means you can see through it. So you just click it here. You have different numbers in increments of 10 all the way up to 90%. Now these are percentage or degrees of transparency. So a setting of zero means it is zero transparency. It has no transparency whatsoever. It's completely solid. The 90 means 90% 90 of that object is transparent. So you can only see 10% of it. So the higher the number, the less of it you're going to see. And that you can control by layer. As you can see, I set that to 90. And well, they are very hard to see extremely so. It's there. I'm not sure you can see it on the recording, but it is. So let's cut that back to 50. There, now it's a little bit more prevalent. That's nice when you want to, you know, ghost something back. You know, meaning that you want the line there, but you want to, you know, not put emphasis on it. So you fade it back. And that's one way you can do that with the transparency. Now, you can have something that doesn't print out. It's called no plot. And that's what this setting here does. Like this case right here, it won't plot. Now it will because I clicked it. Click it again, it won't plot. We use that with viewports quite a bit. A viewport is sort of a window from your paper space to your model space, so it brings it in. You don't want to see that line work that shows your shape, that's your window, but you need to know where it is while you're working in AutoCAD. That way it will define it, but not commit you to the line work. This last section here will be a new viewport freeze. That means if you select this, whenever someone creates a new viewport, which we'll talk about in another section, um, the viewport will have that layer frozen. So if you're working on something specific on a small area of your drawings for the whole project that you don't want other people to necessarily include, uh, this is great for revision work. So let's say you've done your project, you've submitted it in, and now it, you're coming back with a change, and you don't want it to show up in your other drawings by accident. So you put it on a new layer, and you say new viewport freeze. So Anytime someone makes a new viewport or it comes in, it's not going to be turned on. It'll be off, so the line work won't show up. And this last column is a description. Here you can put in a description, 
In this case, this is a wall. You just click in here and you can say, you know, just type in whatever you want. Contains all building walls. There you go. That helps because it can get kind of complicated every once in a while on what a layer really is. So this can help you better define and to leave notes for people on what you've done here. You can click here, make a new layer. Click here to freeze all of them in the viewport, to delete them, or to make one current. 